Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. My name is Daryl Salas. I am VP of Americas for Hopsworks, and I'm joined by Fabio Busso, who's a head of engineering for Hopsworks. And we're going to give you a demo, a little bit of discussion first around our agile co-pilot using Gen AI. And um, we also have a lot of time for questions and answers uh, throughout. So we have a few slides to give context around the demo. Uh, then we have the demo. We can probably uh, take questions um, after the slides, before the demo, and then after the demo. Okay. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so Agile Copilot, and here are our goals and objectives. So we looked around on the market. There are other co-pilots out there, not too many, but there's a few. And um, they don't really do a whole lot uh, in terms of you know, adding to the bottom line productivity, faster time to value, um, because the, they just, they're just not that in depth. And using Gen AI is, is a complicated problem. And there are a lot of technology components involved. Uh, so we're, Hopsworks is in a very unique position to leverage our platform to build this application. And um, so uh, what we're expecting is 30% improvement in productivity, 30% faster time to value using Gen AI. And here are some of the challenges that uh, we're trying to address with the solution or that we do address. Uh, we're, we're actually using our own product for our own development, uh, our product roadmap is tied to um, uh, creating you know, JIRA tickets around all the new features and functionality and assigning tasks and assigning people. And, and uh, we have very strict deadlines. So, right, so we're, we're using our own product and what we're trying to do is uh, get better at estimating story points, estimating task duration, um, uh, and then, impact analysis. So if, if you're a developer or project manager or any, any team member that's involved, um, just giving the right amount of context uh, um, to help them do their job, including the ability to do what if analysis. So if I change my uh, estimated you know, story point or, or duration, what's gonna be the impact downstream? You know, who's, uh, um, uh, who's involved upstream on this that I might want to notify. So that kind of context we want to put in a context panel uh, for for chatbot uh, to help people do, uh, you know, even understand the whole uh, impact of what they're doing. And also to be able to standardize. So different teams might have different ways of estimating story points uh, or different ways of uh, documenting things. So we want to um, personalize as much as possible uh, to the either the individual level or the team level or whatever unit level uh, as, as they do their work. Um, next slide. All right, so here's a list of uh, questions we can think of in advance. Now, the chatbot is gonna be able to answer any question, even questions we don't anticipate, but uh, we started out coming up with questions that, that you would anticipate. And a lot of these questions that you'd anticipate, you can actually give answers to in the context panel before uh, the person even asks the question. So as soon as a developer, or project manager, or analyst logs in, um, the chatbot knows who that person is and they already have, uh, you know, based on that information, they already have some context around what team they're on, project they're assigned to, um, things like that, uh, what tickets they're working on. And so then you can start answering some questions in advance and put those in the context panel. Um, and some of the types of questions are very complex. So we, we brought in for anything that involves uh, like a, a lot of dependencies, like task dependencies that you'll see, um, we, we use the graph database to calculate 
you know, do some aggregations like aggregated duration, aggregated priorities, um, and and you know pr either pre-calculate those and store the pre-calculation or calculate them on the fly. So we have those in the solution, um, and and you know the types of questions are around personalization. Then uh, there's other types of questions. Next slide. Um, uh, so, so just some tabular aggregations, the path aggregations I mentioned, and then similarity search. So if you're familiar with Gen AI and LLMs, you can sort of see how we're headed into like the technology, the technologies involved in the data layer, which are multiple technologies because we have a vector index for the similarity search. We have uh, a, a tabular uh, a database that, that caches uh, some of these tabular aggregations, and then any of the um, connected data aggregations are calculated in a graph database, but then written back to the tabular, uh, the tabular online database. And so that's those are the types of questions that we're answering. Next slide. All right. So here's kind of the um, you know three layer stack. So we have the chat bot with what if analysis, context panel, suggested questions, uh, building visualizations into the chat bot. Um, then we have this conductor that generates functions available for the LLMs and you know, decides uh, which ones to use, how. We have the different pipelines, um, uh, feature pipeline, training pipeline, and inference pipeline. And you know, inferences for, uh, I'm sorry, uh, training is for fine tuning, feature is for, for caching the data, the context data, and uh, and then the inference is for making the predictions. And then we have the online offline store. Almost everything is in the online store because if you have large teams, um, you could have thousands or tens of thousands of concurrent users. So you, you want to have like, low second or even millisecond response times. So that's the goal for this uh, use case, even at extreme scales, right? Um, the offline store though, uh, gives you point in time versions, user feedback are, are in the offline store. And then, as I mentioned, it's, it's an enterprise class uh, application. So you get performance at scale, it's trusted, it's efficient, you get the security auditing versioning, and uh, and then it's fully customizable, so it's it, it it works right out of the box. But then you can uh, uh, add anything you want to it. Next slide. All right. So here's the data that we're using. Uh, so in this demo, we used an open data set for uh, um, Jira tickets, and here are the key entities that were. Um, that we're using and uh, we use the graph database, as I mentioned, to calculate the, the path aggregations such as duration and priority uh, upstream, I mean, sorry, downstream. Um, and then the right-hand side is just a screenshot from Neo4j where you can see uh, for, for, for one, of the, uh, one of the lineage type of um, subgraphs, just to see how the data is connected. It's just one example. We have some, in this data set, we have up to 13 hops of dependencies um, from, a, from, an, from an anchor point or from a specific ticket out to um, as many uh, records that, you know, along that lineage. Uh, that's the, the largest number of hops in a path is 13 in this data set, but it could be, a lot more than that. Um, and most of them have, have several hops, not just one hop out. And you can see the, the you know, the labels here are kind of like the, the table names uh, in, the, in just this one example, our stories, improvements. Those are the key, what I mentioned, the key entities on the left side. So in this one example, we don't have every one of these key entities in the picture on the right, um, but over the entire data set, those are the ones we have. And as I mentioned, we use this for our own roadmap. So if it's a, a new product or, or new features, that's what the, the new features would be. 
if it's like just improving uh, um, a product that we have out there, those would be improvements. And then everything here is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I think everything else and uh, the types of data that you could bring in. So for us, we're a software company. So we have uh, user manuals, operating manuals, uh, uh, product description, requirements, descriptions, uh, we have confluence. Um, but you can bring in any set of documents in, into this. Next slide. All right, so here's the workflow um, that we're gonna show you uh, from the chat bot, starting with the, the prompt and going into the retrieval, the augmentation uh, and conducting. We mentioned we're, we're leveraging function calling, which is, which is unique in and of itself. Um, most of the LLMs now support function calling and you can use function calling for to create these, these canned queries that you would expect people to ask and they can be parameterized. Um, and the functions can be for SQL databases, but they can also be um, for like graph databases such as Neo4j. And the Neo4j queries, we, we, we wrote those in, in Cypher queries. Otherwise, um, the, the tabular ones are, are SQL. And the LLM you know, figures out which functions to call. Uh, that's kind of a general description. Fabio can give you more detail as he goes through on the demos and we can go through the Q&A. Next slide. Okay, so I'll pause here, hand it over to Fabio and see if anybody has any questions at this point. Let's see. Okay, let me just, uh, in the meantime, get the... Uh, yeah, get to the, uh, the other part. Okay. Oh, let me get this one away. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the chatbot interaction um, as it is. Um, we have uh, a couple, as, as we were mentioning earlier, as, as, as Dali was mentioning earlier, uh, the, 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 the co-pilot, the agile co-pilot can answer uh, questions about the state of the art, like the state of the of the project, right? Things like, okay, what, what are things like, um, what are the bugs that are related to a specific ticket? Uh, what are the uh, improvements that are connected to, to a specific ticket? Uh, but also more complex things like, well, when do we expect this sprint to, to be over? when do we expect this task to be over or things like what, what's the next best ticket I should work on if I'm a developer and I wanna know um, how, like what, 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 should, what should I pick up next uh, based on, on things like priority, based on things like, uh, how, to block, like how, many, how many tickets are, are, are blocked by, by, by any given ticket and, and things like this. So this is kind of one type of queries that, that, that the chatbot um, can, can, can interact with and, and kind of a persona that can, that they, they can, they can be useful though. Um, the other aspect is also kind of um, simplifying the process of creation uh, of these tickets, as, as Sally was mentioning earlier. You know, things like um, how to break down ticket into, into different tasks, how to estimate the different story points, um, and things like this. All this is kind of uh, personalized by, you know, different teams, different squads working on it, and um, kind of uh, be able to, 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 to figure that out. Right? So um, in this example, actually, we have two... Um, different queries, uh, they are powered by the same chatbot. And the way the, the flow works is when I ask a question like this, for instance, I start from, from the second one, which is like, can you list all the bugs linked to Kafka 5677? Um, the data set that we are using to demo this project is, is taken from the Apache, uh, from the Apache Jira uh, 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 um, process, which is open. Um, there's a data set open uh, that you can you can use to, to do this uh, type of demos. Involve a bunch of different projects um, that kind of simulate uh, different teams working on it or like different components of the project um, and and um, and uh, you know information about duration of tasks and things like this. Right. So um, in this specific case, uh, what happens if I go back? How, do, how does the chatbot answer this specific question? And how does he use the um, 
the Aldazi, um, Aldazi goes through the, the different process, right? So the first item is we get the prompt. Um, we get the prompt that gets uh, it's sent to the LLM, um, Opsurx, um, uh, and the, the chatbot supports a bunch of different LLMs, right? So if you if you're using OpenAI, you can plug in OpenAI. If you're using uh, Mistral or 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 Lama, you can you can you, you can bring your own um, you can bring your own your own LLM, right? So um, as all these like you know top tier LLMs, they, they support function cloning, which is the the the, 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 the essentially the, um, the 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 how do you say the uh, the functionality that we use in the LLM to, to power the chatbot, right? So the first thing we have to do is uh, in this specific case, um, we built uh, uh, basically a conductor that allows you to kind of um, uh, answer these type of queries. And the first um, thing that you need that the LLM needs to do is identifying which of the different agents that we built um, is is needed to be able to uh, to be able to um, to to answer this specific query, right? So in this moment we have we have two of them. Uh, we have one, as I said, to kind of answer questions about the state of the art, so the state of the project, and then we have like another agent that is able to generate um, uh, future like tasks and break down tasks and things like this. So um, the first thing we do we send this question to the from the chatbot to the to the LLM, and we ask to identify which which are the um, agent to to kind of use and to involve. Um, there is a set of, as as I was mentioned, there's a set of like can queries um, that uh, we can use to identify relationships um, using uh, a knowledge graph. Using uh, we have mapped uh, the the different tasks and different um, the different uh, you know relationship between tasks in, in a graph. So we can basically say starting from a specific uh, ticket, um, can you traverse the graph and figure it out. Things like what are the other uh, bugs or, or 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 improvements or new features that are connected to this one or they're blocked to this one and things like this. So so it extracts the um the the the, the anchor point um the type of target and potentially also the type of relationship that you want and it runs this query against the um against the the graph right. Um the the agent is also um smart enough to basically. Uh, reuse the output of these queries. So once the um, once this 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 output has been computed, um, then you can basically say, okay, take this output and and install in what we call the our online pitch store for real time retrieval, right? So um, next time you ask the same question, we don't go back to the graph, computer graph, um, but we just use the the cache version, uh, which is much faster and gives you like a much like a like a faster user user experience. Um, once we get the answer, in this case, we just uh, you know augment information potentially with things like um, the ticket number, the duration of the task that is planned to, uh, or, or or things like this, right? So this is a part of the augmentation process um, that that we are talking about earlier um, to be able to kind of give back an answer uh, to the to the user in the in the prompt. Um, this is more um, visible in in this type first type of question. So if you say something like create a story. Then in this case, again, we're talking about the Kafka project. So I created sorry, to add Prometheus metrics, which is a type of um, you know monitoring metrics um, to the brokers, which is one of the components of the Kafka project. Um, and what basically happens here is that uh, we ask the LLM to, to do a couple of things, right? OK, first of all, it's identify the story. The LLM knows that uh, we have to use this um, um, story agent um, that, that we have built. And that story agent um, does a couple of different steps in the scene. So the first thing, it, it, it finds um, related tasks that have been solved in the past that are similar to the tasks that you are asking right now to, to build, essentially, right, or to create, right? Um, this allows you to do a couple of different things, allows you to do, uh, you know, point out that there are, you know, already existing tasks that are in the roadmap that, that you know, that you don't have to create a new one. Or things like um, I want to be able to say who is the person that worked in these areas in the past and who is best to work on this area now, um, or look at how long those tasks have taken in the past and try to figure out um, how long the new tasks are going to be are going to be are going to be um, are going to be used. Right. So that's that's the first step. The first step. And to achieve the first step, well, what, what the what the conductor does is actually uses similarity search. Right. So as part of our uh, what we call feature pipelines. So be able to take all data coming in 
and 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 be able to make it available for the chatbot to, to consume it and for the conductor to use it. Um, we have basically indexed all the all the existing tickets, all the existing comments, all these the descriptions and 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 all the documentation in the uh, in the vector index, which is part of Opsox, right? So that allows us to basically take the question coming in, um, compute embeddings of that question, and be able to kind of um, look up and do um, similarity search and search like the related tickets. Um, one additional thing you want to do is we have some additional metadata, um, and we have some additional metadata specific to the team that is actually building this, right? So we have things like, uh, I mean, just this is this is Opsox. We have some structure metadata um, around the team, um, things like, um, if I look at um, a specific team, how long does typically a, a given uh, task, which is like a small task take in terms of hours, what's how long does it like a medium task take in, in terms of hours and things like this. So all these are computed in the background uh, based on the activity happening on, 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 on Jira um, and on data coming in, and we keep updating them on the line feature store. So once the, um, once the copilot, well, sorry, once the once the conductor has retrieved the similar tickets, we can find out how long those tickets have taken in the past. Usually, how long the team takes um, to to kind of work on uh, on those type of tickets and start building out what's the story, what's what's the breakdown, and different tickets and an estimate of how long this is gonna um, this is gonna take essentially, right? So. Um, the LM then comes up, we instruct the LM to come up with a set of tasks based on the uh, existing uh, request from the user and also based on the uh, context set by the different other different um, um, similar types that we, we have uh, taken into consideration. Again, we um, ingested uh, things like uh, the Confluent pages uh, from the documentation, right? So there are, you know, design logs that are available, there are uh, you know, uh, proposals in place and things like this, which, you know, we can extract information like, uh, you know, important considerations in the architecture, um, you know, specific uh, items like, um, you know, uh, design guidelines or like coding styles and things like this. All this can get fed into the into the context of DLM. And uh, finally, um, we can, based on the context of the DLM, we can also um, uh, build out the uh, the uh, yeah an estimation of the uh, ask the LM to come up with an estimation of, of of the time right so given this one we can also also close the loop so this is this is essentially just again closing the loop on um you know returning back the the information based on the augmentation passing it back to the LM for one additional pass on summarization and 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 bring back like a um like a context of the um to the user. Um, the user can submit feedback. Um, I really submitted for this one. Um, you basically can collect things like um, user feedback on the um, on the on the LM, right? On and the interactions on things like what's the what's the grade of the user is given, whether it's like, it's like like you know the answer was not helpful, or the answer was helpful, and and basically register all the interaction. That would allow us to basically uh, as the tool is being used uh, by different teams and 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 so on allows us to, to figure out if there are, um, you know, uh, regression in terms of um, the quality of the answer, right? Maybe I may, I, maybe like we want to try out different um, LLMs, large language models, um, and want to figure out which one gives the best answer, or I made some changes to um, some of the um, input and the prompt that, that the, 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 the conductor uses. And so we can monitor all that information and monitor all the user feedback and allow basically to, to get back a, to get a feeling of uh, whether or not the um, the answer are useful or, um, or or not. Right. So this is kind of the state of the art for the Agile Copilot. Um, we do have um, a bunch of additional things that that are coming in in the next release for um, the Agile Copilot. Um, one of which is we want to expand the the the, the side panel at the moment. Just just give you um, a bunch of like um, relevant questions to, to your um, to your interactions um, that that you have made. Um, so these are simple questions. You can you can you know keep the conversation going and 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 so on. Uh, but we want to also give back information about you know um, more more structured information like team sizes and you know 
um, team dynamics and 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 um, and uh, metrics um, as well as the tickets metrics and so on. Um, um, one additional thing is that we have this nice visualization about the relationships of the of the of the different um, of different tickets. Um, this comes from Neo4j, which is the um, which is the um, the uh, graph database that, that that the conductor uses to to to, to query the relationships. I uh, want to bring that kind of visualization into the um, chatbot directory, so you'll be able to um, interact with the graph itself and be able to kind of uh, have a more clear visualization of like where things are being. Uh, where things are, uh, you know, if, if you have um, a ticket ready to all the tickets, like in this case, um, you can basically kind of see it in a, in a more like graphical way compared to have it uh, in, a, in a text way, essentially. Um, uh, what if analysis um, to be able to say um, things like what happened right now, we compute um, aggregates for uh, things like um, uh, you know, if you have a if you have a specific story, what are the um, relevant um, what are basically the if you want to solve the story and the story has connected a set of tasks, what are the um, the, the total amount of time and total amount of effort that you need to do to be able to solve that story entirely, including all the subtasks and so on? Um, that that is already available as part of one of the questions that the, the copilot can answer. Um, what we want to bring it is going to step forward and say. Let's say that you want to resize one of the, one of the tasks because you realize it's, it's more complex or it's less complex and so on. Um, you want to be able to provide the user to say, okay, so if if I if I go and change the uh, if I go and change the, um, the the let's say the priority or the uh, effort that I estimate this ticket is going to solve, uh, what's going to be what's going to be the uh, the impact on the story on the on the on the on the sprint and and so on and so forth so allow you to kind of um, real time go update the, the data in the graph and and update the 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 the, product, the, 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 the projections on um, and the forecast on the ata and so on um and finally um we want to be able to kind of um dig down a little bit on the uh on the on the type of relationship you can you can you can uh, you can query um, at the moment it's it's a little bit high level in terms of like you can list all the bugs um relate to a specific ticket um all the improvements and so on but we want to go a little bit deeper in terms of allowing user to select um you know even the type of relationships uh, that we want to be involved um so for instance we might be looking at things like give me back all the um all the tickets that are blocked by this ticket, for instance, right? Uh, giving back all the uh, bugs that are critical and that are blocking, you know, more than 10 tickets or more than than, than a situation like this. So having, having more compl complex queries, both on the graph, but also on the metadata um, that we have available for the, uh, for the, for the, um, for the LLM. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of like that's kind of it um, to to a large extent. Uh, if there are any questions or if if Dari, you want to add anything else, um, yeah. Nothing for me. Any anyone have any questions? Last chance for questions. Okay, well, if not, um, appreciate your time and uh, interest in Opsworks. And uh, oh, here we go. I have a question. Yes, Tom. Okay, slide six. What's the question about slide six? Fabio, do you know what uh, safe big room planning is? Um, no, I'm not a safe uh, person certified, but in general, in general, like. Um, at the moment, uh, my my understanding is uh, so. Let me let me try to to give an answer, and, and let me know if if I'm a little bit off here. 
um, Tom. Um, the at the moment you're tracking the dependency at at, at ticket and story level. Um, um, I suspect I suspect you, you're looking at a more like a ground approach. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the 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 graph, like the the, the copilot here is is customizable to to your data and and your type of questions, right? It can be extended to additional data. And so at the moment we are we have this data set, and the way we are using it also internally is tracking different tickets and reaching between different tickets, right? Um, nothing stops us uh, from let's say adding a more like eye level, like you know if if, if you raise the level of abstraction instead of looking at a specific ticket. Um, looking at more dependencies um, uh, across, yeah, as I said, different different features, different themes, and and um, and uh, you know uh, potentially you know multi sprints or multi 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 months, so to say, kind of uh, efforts to deliver specific features and how they, they get break down in into different items. So, so the content of the graph is it's it's customizable to. To, to, to your own data, if if you bring in like if you track different relationship between different teams and and and, and tasks, we can ingest that one, and 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 be able to augment the copilot to to, to answer with those the type graph, of questions. Yeah, with the model that we have right now, uh, you can have multiple teams. Um, if a product is a project, then you can have multiple projects. Or if you want to separate them out and put a separate. Uh, uh, product label, you can just add that to the graph. And then you can already with the model, you can share features across projects. So if you added product in there, you could share features across uh, products as well. So if we had to customize it, it would just be, you know, really simple customization where we're already um, modeled for almost exactly what you're asking for. And the queries, um, would be almost exactly the same as the ones we already have as well. Just have to do a slight, slight modification. Now, actually the queries, what we did was, um, uh, the queries will work. Uh, you don't even have to change the queries because we dynamically generated the queries and we, um, we based the queries on the labels in the graph. So if you change the graph, the queries will automatically uh, be changed. So you don't even have to change anything in the queries. Um, we, haven't, uh, we haven't announced this yet. Like, uh, like if you look at our website, we have some new announcements about our uh, 4.0 release um, and uh, we haven't announced this one yet. So this, this is an early uh, sneak peek at the Agile Copilot. Any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Have a great day. And um, if you need to uh, reach us, um, actually I should have, we can just uh, whatever you got, let's see. You can uh, send an email to, what's the email address, Fabio? Info at the, Hopsworks. Info, yeah. Info uh, at hopsworks.ai. And we'll also send everybody um, the presentation that we we gave out today and, and include uh, and include contact information. All right. Have a great day. Thanks everyone.